As we've seen, uh, the government uh, reducing uh, the size of those forecast surpluses, $2 billion this year and over the for forward estimates as well. So is the reality of a slowing economy starting to hit the budget bottom line now? Well, the Australian economy continues to grow, but, uh, you know, we are not immune from what is happening in the global economy. And after successive uh, global economic growth downgrades, uh, of course, that impacts on our economy and it is impacting on our revenue base. Uh, and, and that is the adjustment that you're seeing in our half-yearly budget update today. Though, uh, even though uh, we had to write down $30 billion plus in uh, tax revenue. Uh, we uh, remain on track to deliver a surplus this year and each year over the forward estimates and indeed over the medium term with those surpluses growing to more than 1% as a share of GDP. Yeah, and now in terms of growth, we have a chart here on the Bloomberg Terminal that illustrates what you're saying. Yes, Australia is still growing, that impressive record remaining mm -hmm. intact, but as you admit, growth is easing. Is it time then to consider maybe walking back on this idea of having the budget back in the black and, and following the example of Japan and New Zealand and doing what the RBA wants to see, and that's a bit of fiscal stimulus. Uh, uh, no. I mean, you know, obviously uh, we have delivered significant income tax relief, which has provided significant stimulus to the economy. And if you look at uh, our performance, our economic growth performance in the first three quarters of the 2019 calendar year, uh, they have uh, been stronger than the last two quarters uh, in the 2018 calendar year. So we're heading in the right direction. I mean, our outlook is uh, positive. I mean, we've had significant income tax relief. We've had significant, obviously, monetary policy uh, relief on the back of lower uh, cash rates. We've had significant additional investment in infrastructure, uh, a pickup uh, in the resources sector, stabilisation in the housing market. I mean, things are heading in the right direction, though, uh, but, you know, though we are impacted by what's happening in other parts of the world. Yeah, you did mention there that pickup in the resources sector and the budget uh, is predicated on an iron ore price of $55 a tonne. And in that respect, Australia has been very fortunate. Uh, the price has been closer to $90 per tonne. So how grim would the revenue picture be if it hadn't been for that stroke of luck? Well, it's not a stroke of luck. I mean, I completely reject that. I mean, it's obviously cautious and conservative uh, forecasting. I mean, when we came into government in 2013, we inherited a uh, forecast, uh, a, an iron ore price forecast of $120 a tonne, and the price actually went down to $45 a tonne. So, I mean, we, we've, we've uh, kept it consistently uh, because recognising the volatility in our commodity price uh, prices for our key exports. I mean, we've maintained very conservative uh, forecasting assumptions. I mean, $55 in 18-19 was against an actual price of $72 over uh, that uh, financial year. And indeed, uh, this financial year, it's, it's sitting at $85 a tonne. And we're forecasting $55 a tonne uh, by the end of June uh, next, next year, on, you know, essentially, uh, as a matter of uh, caution and conservatism. Um, we've also seen econ well, not just economic growth forecasts, but wage growth forecasts uh, lowered as well uh, for the coming years. Is it time to perhaps consider bringing forward uh, some of that tax relief that's in the budget? Well, we, we've legislated more than $300 billion worth of income tax relief in the last two financial years, and uh, a lot of that is still working its way through uh, the economy as we speak. Uh, so we, we'll continue to make uh, you know, sensible, carefully uh, considered uh, judgments uh, you know, in, in the lead-up to the uh, next budget. But you know, wide, real wages growth remains stronger than when we came into government. Gr wages continue to grow above inflation, and indeed uh, the uh, increase, the growth in disposal income in the last quarter was the highest in more than a decade. Two and a half percent growth in disposable uh, income uh, in the most recent quarter, more than five percent growth in disposable income over the most recent 12 months period. I mean, th th these are good figures, uh, but of course, I mean, we would like to see wages growth strengthen into the future, and our plan for the economy is designed to help achieve that. Minister Corman, it's uh, Kathleen Hayes in New York. Uh, yes, disposable income may be up, but one of the uh, striking things that's been happening in the economy recently is consumers aren't spending. Some people feel that the consumer has looked at the rate cuts by the RBA and thinks is worried about the economy. Could this also be a signal that they see things in the economy that are worrisome? That's why they're pulling back. 
Well, I think there's a range of things that, uh, you know, flow into uh, consumer confidence and consumer perceptions. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, a, a lot of the uncertainty at a global level, uh, I mean, people in Australia are very aware that we are a trading economy and that when you've got uh, significant uh, trade tensions between the US and China that that has an impact on us. People are obviously aware uh, of uh, you know Brexit, very aware of Brexit here uh, in Australia and so I mean but the, the good news is that on both those fronts you know the outlook has been improving in uh, recent times. I mean some of the developments in terms of the uh, discussions between the US and China are obviously very encouraging uh, and the resolution uh, of Brexit uh, a few days ago with the re-election of the Johnson uh, government uh, also very encouraging. So we, we, we expect that in the weeks and months to come that the global environment will become somewhat more benign uh, and that should also help with um, consumer confidence here in Australia. I know ministers of finance often don't want to comment on their central bank, but broadly speaking, uh, you know, it seems like the RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia, is not keen about doing bond purchases, not keen on doing quantitative easing. And in fact, a lot of central banks are trying to get away from that. Broadly speaking, would you rather uh, not take steps to uh, do infrastructure spending, do something that would help uh, the economy in this time <coughs> where things are a bit tight, uh, then are you content to see that kind of step taken and hope that it works? Well, our economy continues to grow when quite a few other economies around the world have actually been shrinking. Uh, and, you know, of we, we already have a very significant infrastructure investment program of more than $100 billion over the next decade. Uh, and, you know, we, we will continue to make these judgments. But you're right. I mean, monetary policy is a matter for the Reserve Bank. And uh, the Reserve Bank makes these decisions independently. And, uh, you know, the Reserve Bank governor has made very clear that he can't foresee a scenario where uh, unconventional monetary policy options would be required in Australia. I mean, our, our economic circumstance does not warrant uh, that sort of uh, discussion even. I mean, our, our, our economy in, in, in a global context continues to perform comparatively well, and our outlook uh, in a global context is positive. You know, when I interviewed your, Josh, your uh, colleague Josh Frydenberg at the IMF in October, when it came to the impact of the trade war on Australia, he says, like others, you know, this has a lot to do with uncertainty. And yes, business people around the world are uncertain. They haven't been investing as much. Is it your sense from what you know at this point and where the U.S. and China, for example, are going on their trade deal? With so many questions, uh, with so many questions about it, how far this goes, is that going to be enough to relieve uncertainty and take that pressure off the Australian economy? Well, th things are heading in the right direction. We're very encouraged by recent developments and, and you know, obviously, you know, we understand that, uh, you know, there's still more issues to be resolved. However, uh, you know, we, we, we have always said it's, it's in the interest of both the U.S. and China. Indeed, it's in our interest and we believe it's in the interest of countries around the world for these uh, trade tensions to be resolved and for there to be a, a, a new sustainable accommodation uh, in relation to trade matters between the U.S. and China moving forward. Um, and, you know, we, we are uh, an open uh, trading economy. We are globally uh, focused but also globally exposed uh, trading economy. So, I mean, anything that helps to improve the global growth outlook is obviously good for us. Um, in terms of uh, things that you can't control, Australia also gripped by a drought at the moment. Uh, to what extent is that weighing on growth forecasts? Well, I mean, that's, that's one of the significant um, challenges domestically that we've been dealing with. I mean, a, a significant drought in large parts of regional Australia, and which, which has had an impact on the uh, you know, agricultural sector and, and the output from the agricultural uh, sector. And, and indeed, bushfires in uh, large parts of Australia too. So, I mean, th th these are things that we have to deal with from time to time. Uh, indeed, these are not things that we control, but we've got to make the best of um, the situation we find ourselves in. Um, just briefly, um, I'm wondering uh, if you at all regret uh, painting yourself into a corner on returning the budget to surplus. If that political promise hadn't been made, uh, would now be an opportune time to spend? Uh, n n not at all. I mean, you know, we, we think it is very important for the Australian people and for the strength of the Australian economy into the future, not just tomorrow but over the medium and long term. 
that we that government lives within its means. I mean, Australians rely on the welfare and health and educational services we provide. They rely on government being able to sustainably fund all of these services without increasing taxes to a level where we would, where we would harm economic growth and employment growth into the future. So uh, we, we are working very hard to ensure that Australians today and into the future have the best possible opportunity to, to get ahead and to keep taxes as a share of the economy at a, at a reasonable level uh, is an important part of that. And that means that we've got to continue to control expenditure growth moving forward.